Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Qi Hui. Uh, so this is a presentation on the 24 solar term. Uh, we are around the time of the winter solstice. Uh, thank you for everybody coming up tonight. Um, it's um, so this is a this is going to be a free lecture. Uh, it's a you know it's a preparation. It's a um, introduction to the 24 solar term um, certificate program which is going to be starting in uh, January. So um, I want to introduce myself a little bit. Uh, I am, I, I graduated from uh, Pacific College um, in 2021. Um, I'm now practicing in New, New York and New Jersey. I also have a, a certification in social work. So before we start the winter solstice, we have to talk about what uh, 24 solar terms are. So the, uh, the 24 solar terms were created by farmers in ancient China based on the sun's position in the zodiac to guide agricultural fairs and farming activities. They reflect the changes in climate, natural phenomena, agricultural production, and other aspects of Chinese uh, of human life, including uh, clothing, food, housing, and uh, transportation. So in Chinese, it's called yi uh, shi zhu xing. So um, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and uh, Cultural Organization has in inscribed Chinese uh, 24 solar terms on the representative list of the uh, intangible cultural heritage of uh, the humanity. So as we can see that the 24 solar terms are very important to, to Chinese culture and to Chinese people's uh, daily life. So um, in order to understand the winter solstice, we have to talk about some astronomy. So uh, this is um, the winter solar, the, the winter solar term, is around December 22nd. Sometimes it's uh, the 21st, sometimes it's the 20, 23rd, depending on the sun's position. So when the sun reaches the celestial uh, lo longitude uh, at 27, uh, 270 degrees, that's the time for uh, the winter solstice. So if we go back to the first page, we will see there is a time um, under the title, that's the exact time of the 20, uh, of the 270 uh, degree. So each, um, each day, um, each winter solar solstice in different years are different. So on this day, um, the sun hits the ground uh, directly at this, uh, the southern end of the year, almost directly at the Tropic of uh, Capricorn. Um, China has used the tool, a timekeeper called uh, Tu Gui to observe the sun, which I will show you uh, in the next page. The, the, um, so actually the winter solstice is the first solar term among all other, um, all the uh, so, uh, winter, all the solar terms. Um, it was uh, determined by uh, Asian Chinese 2,500 years ago in, in the Chunqiu Zhangguo, the spring and autumn era of the uh, Eastern Zhou Dynasty. So on the day of winter solstice, it is the shortest, uh, the day is the shortest and the night is the longest in the Northern uh, Hemisphere throughout the year. However, uh, in the southern hemisphere, it's totally the opposite. So it's going to be the summer solstice, which has the longest uh, day and the shortest night. And also the day is the, the most in time of the year. So this is the, the Tu Gui, 
I think we have three people in the waiting room. Okay. Um, so this is an ancient tool for measuring the length of the, the sun's shadow. Uh, in, the, in the image, you can see uh, that the blue uh, line is the, is the winter solstice. Um, and uh, the red line is gonna be the solar, the, the summer solstice. So it's very simple. There is a pole in the uh, at one end, which is uh, erected perpendicular to the ground, and the change of the season can be determined by observing and recording the change of the lens of its shadow and noon. So according um, according to the uh, records, the first months of the Zhou calendar, the Zhou dynast dynasty calendar, is November of the lunar calendar, which means that the first months of the Zhou dynasty is equivalent to our pre present November. At that time, the Zhou dynasty treated the winter solstice as the first day of the new year. The Asians believe that since the winter solstice, Yang Qi of the universe began to flourish, representing the beginning of the next circle. It is a highly auspicious day. Therefore, some traditional customs, such as ancestor worshiping, uh, family dinner parties, which are later are popular um, during the, uh, the, the spring festival, took place on, on this day. Um, so there are uh, 72 um, pentads. Uh, in Chinese, it's called qi shi er hou. Um, here we need to do some math. Um, uh, the 72 holes are uh, throughout the year, and each hole has uh, five days, and each solar term is divided into three pen, uh, pentads. Um, so this is from Huangdi Neijing. It says, uh, when Huangdi asked Chibo, um, so I have heard by now about the calculations of 6-6 six, six and 9-9. Nine, nine. And Chibo says, this is kept secret by the Lords on high. Um, the teachers of former times uh, have transmitted it. And uh, Chibo says five days is named Ho, which is one uh, phonology. Three Ho's is named Qi. Six Qi is named season. Four seasons is named year. So, um, so the, the, the 24 solar terms in Chinese is called jie qi. So jie is different from qi. So jie is, you know, as you can read here, there are six qi and uh, there are actually only four, four jie. The rest are qis. The four jie are uh, the winter solstice, the solar solstice, the summer solstice, uh, the, the spring, equinox and the, the autumn equinox. Chi Hui, if you want to make yes. me co-host, I can keep an eye on the waiting room so you don't have to. Oh, thanks so much. That would be great. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, the Qi Shi Er Ho, the 72 Ho, that's, that literally means that uh, we, are, we need to wait for the Qi and observe nature phenomena. Um, so the, the phenomena are either um, biological or botanical. So let's take a look at the, the three holes, the three pentads of the winter solstice. So the first pentad is uh, earthworms from knots, form knots. Uh, the second pentad is moose horn solution. The third pentad is spring uh, water moves. So the Asians believe that when the Yang Qi is not moving, 
the earthworm bowed its head downward. When the young tree was moving, it turned its head upward. At the beginning of the winter solstice, the young tree was still very strong, and the earthworms in the soil shrank into a bowl like a knotted rope. And uh, the the moose we are talking about here is uh, refers to the the elk. Uh, it is also called four knot like. So it's it's uh hub it's hooves. It's not like the uh, it's like it's like the the cows, but it is not cow. Uh, its face looks like horse, but it is not a horse. Its tail is look like a donkey, but it's not a donkey. Its horn looks like deer, but it's not a deer. So it's called for not like. The Asians believe that the elk belong to the yin uh, animal. And when the winter solstice came, the elk felt the yin qi gradually diminished. So its uh, horn began to fall off. Um, on the opposite, uh, on the summer solstice, um, one of the holes, one of the pentads is the deer horn solution. So the deer is actually a young animal. When the deer felt the young chi gradually diminished, its uh, horn uh, began to fall off. So it's totally the opposite. Um, I'll, I'll show you two pictures on next slides. Uh, the last pentad is, so that means in the last five days, although the surface cold is still very heavy, gas began to emerge from the deep well. This means that the young energy is beginning to rise. The, the earth is about to recover. In the spring water in, in the mountains also begins to flow due to the rising young energy. And here are two images of the deer and the, the elk. The left, uh, the one on the right side is the, the deer. Uh, in Chinese, we call it lu. Uh, as you can see, uh, the character is the image of the, the deer. Um, so this is a very uh, typical uh, Chinese character. Um, the left image um, is, the, is the elk, and it has a um, bonic indicator, which is the rice part underneath of the, the loo. So it's it reads me, um, but they are very similar. So they share um, one part. So uh, China is a country whose people value uh, antiquity very highly. So in such a big days, in such a big day, people uh, do a lot of things. Um, they offer sacrifice to the ancestors. That's very important for Chinese culture. And they also visit and pay respect to the elderly, like elders, and also to their uh, teachers. Um, so we see that the Asian empire, empires worship the sun at the spring equinox the heaven on they worship the heaven on su summer solstice and the moon on the autumn equinox on new year's eve Qingming, the tomb sweeping day uh, in the winter solstice the common people will worship their ancestors reminisce their uh, decreased relatives so the picture in the middle um, on the first line, you can see that people use the, the pig's head to worship the heaven. Uh, there are some, you know, his, historical background of using pig's head. So the pig is the first 
um, it, it's one of the most important um, uh, livestock. Uh, it's considered the, the best. So by offering the head, so the head is the most important part of the body. So offering the best to the heaven uh, is to show one's sin, uh, sincerity. So on winter solstice, um, the way people show their respect to the um, elders is to give shoes to, to them. Um, it's a traditional uh, virtue of Chinese, the Chinese. And the picture on the, the, the right side is people doing um, ice storage, uh, harvesting. So they, um, when there, when there was no uh, refrigerator um, during the winter time, people, you know, go on the river and, you know, when there are ice available, they, they take them out and put them in, in a storage room so they can use it uh, in the summer. Um, this is the Man Manchu people uh, playing uh, on ice. This is a huge ceremony. Um, that's very common on the winter solstice. And this is people playing uh, the snow boat. Uh, this is a, a little uh, translation. It's like the snow sled board um, people playing uh, nowadays. There are a lot of fun things to do um, during the winter. So starting the winter solstice, um, people start counting the nights because the most um, cold, the, the coldest days are coming and that will last for 81 days. So the nights are nine period of nine days starting um, the winter solstice until around, um, I think, that's either the third or between the third and fourth um, solar terms of the um, spring. So um, after the 81 days, uh, the farmers starts go um, out um, onto the, the farm to, to work. So this is a song. Um, I don't know how to sing it, but it you can just read it as a as a poem. It says the first and second nights don't take hands out of, out of your pockets. During nights three and four, you can walk on ice. In the fourth and sixth nights are to be seen willows at rivers red, uh, edge start to sp sprout. The rivers thaw during the seventh nights. In the ace wild uh, geese fly back to the north area. The nice night and the following days, farm cattle start to work in the field. Um, these are the ways people are uh, doing counting the nines. You know, it's very artistic. Uh, there are so many different ways. Uh, these are the three major ways. So on the left, uh, we see, uh, I, I can read it to you. It's, it says, Ting tian chui liu, zhen zhong dai chun feng. It means weeping uh, willows in front of the pavilion, cherish the spring breeze. So each day you just write uh, one strike, and nine days you finish one character. So each character has nine strikes. Once you finish the 81 days, 81 days passed. So the second one, is, these are corn, uh, these are coins. Um, it's interesting because um, if the day is a sunny day, you use a 
uh, red color, you write sunny, qing, uh, in the in the bottom. If it's a windy day, you use uh, yellow color. Um, you write it. You write wind or feng on on the left. Uh, if it it's a snow snow day, you write right in the middle. Use a um, um, blue color. And if it's a cloudy day, uh, which in Chinese is called yin. So when the yang, the, the, the tai yang, the sun is uh, absent, uh, that's the yin, right? So they call it the, the cloudy day yin, yin tian. So you write the yin with um, maybe purple color uh, on, on, on the top. Um, I think I think there is no no, no rain, rainy days, so there is nothing on the on the um, on the right. In the the last picture is the the plum blossom. Um, plum blossom is very typical in uh, winter in China. Um, each flower has a uh, nine uh, petals so you just use the color to to uh, fit in um, okay so in general um, the winter solstice uh, night is the quietest and longest night of the year the winter solstice corresponds to the full hexagram which is the image on the left side um, in I Ching, the Book of Changes, the hexagram image, there are five uh, yin lines on the top and the one yang line on the bottom, which symbolize that the yang energy is brewing and begin to move. In ancient times, the winter solstice was uh, designated as the zi months. So the zi, uh, I refer to the earthly branches, the 20, um, uh, it's, it's the 12 um, earthly branches. Um, so this is called the zi yue. So if we are saying zi shi, that means the time between uh, 11, from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. So that's called zi shi, which is the uh, gallbladder uh, time. So actually, it resonates um, the same, um, the zi shi and the zi month is, is very similar. It's either the time of the year or the time of the day. So they have the same energy. Um, the zi shi is the time when the yang qi of the, yang, uh, the human body is at birth. However, the yang qi at the time is still very weak, so we need to take care of it so, so that the yang qi can continue to grow. So that's why uh, we, um, we say um, it's better to go to bed before 11, right? And also the GB time is the, um, the, the GB time is the, uh, the element of wood, the wood, we always say uh, right? Uh, we never say like or something uh, because wood is always the first. That's the beginning of the day or of the year. So therefore, um, the winter solstice is a quiet uh, festival. On this day, the city gates are closed, shops are closed, wars cease, and parties are um, prohibited. So, what do we do on winter solstice? So, this is a story I want to talk about. Uh, I I think a lot of people in 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 the in the room knows. Uh, who the gentleman is. He's a superstar in our field. And his name is Zhang Zhongjin. 
uh, from the Eastern Han Dynasty. Um, when we um, talk about uh, winter solstice, we always thinking about making dumplings, eating dumplings. But um, I don't know, dumplings are made are created by Zhang Zhongjing until recently. So in um, Han Dynasty, so when Zhang Zhongjing went back to his um, hometown, he found the villagers are suffering from um, the forest bite, the, the frozen uh, ears. So they are suffering. And Zhang Zhongjing is trying to, was trying to help so she made um, she made a dough, and she put herbs and uh, mutton in the in 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 the wrap wrapper. Uh, he made it made it into a uh, ear shape. So he named it um, the Chu Han Jiao Er Tang. So literally, it means uh, cold spouting tender ear decoction or soup. So, um, from that time, the tradition of eating uh, dumplings on winter solstice has passed down from generation to generation. And uh, there is a, when I prepared this uh, lecture, I did a little bit more uh, research on what kind of herbs he put it in, in the dumpling. Um, so there are ginger, um, cinnamon, fennel, and some people say chili, but actually that's not true because chili is not imported until the Ming Dynasty, uh, according the later uh, historical in investigation. So I also found another uh, res resource. It says it, it might be the Sichuan pepper. So these herbs are very warming and some are spicy. So it's gonna get rid of the, the cold in the body. So even though you're not eating dumplings, you can add these um, herbs into your um, soup or anything like uh, sauteed veggie or something. Yeah. And besides um, the dumplings jiaozi, there are oh, there is another type of uh, dumpling. It's called hun, uh, wonton. Um, this is something to do with the uh, Taoist um, commemoration of the birth of a uh, primordial being in creation figure called Pangu. So the it, it says the world was once in chaos and it was Pangu who separated the world from the chaos and opened up the world. So the winter solstice has the shortest day and the longest night when the yin and yang are changing alternatively. So people could also cook wonton on this day to celebrate. Also in the uh, southern China, people make Another kind of dumpling, it's made of a sticky rice. Um, so, you know, each uh, region in China has different kind of culture. So since we are all, I know a lot of uh, people here today are from the acupuncture and Chinese medicine field. So definitely we wanted to talk about the wellness practice. Uh, what shall we, uh, what is suggested or advised to do on the winter solstice? Uh, what is, what, what needs to be aware of? What are the things we uh, want to educate our patients? Um, these are the things uh, we can, you know, take a look and apply into our practice in our daily life. So I'm gonna talk about a sitting qigong, uh, two different massage, um, and some food uh, inspiration. So in general, um, this is from the book um, "A Winds in the Heavens" by uh, Tom Bissell. 
he says the principle of the winter solstice is to activate yang um, in order to avoid illness. So the whole the whole idea of the the twenty four solar terms um, program that I created is based on the integrative medicine, especially to the direction of uh, illness prevention. Um, so this is um, what we need to practice in the winter solstice is to activate young to avoid illness. So he says, uh, stay at home and cultivate quiet and calm, restraining your activities on the days around the winter solstice, sleep a little bit more, and then try to talk less and conserve your chi. Uh, curtail sexual activity during these days, try and truly feel as though all your desires are fulfilled, which might not be true, but pretend you are. Um, everything is already accomplished. This includes restraint with regards to sexual activities, um, restraint in the consumption of alcohol, which moves chi outward, and a restraint in talking too much, which I, that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> that consumes my chi. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll take a longer rest tonight. Um, take walks outside, but don't tire yourself. See if you can postpone holiday parties until later, which is very hard, I know. Uh, this is a good time to meditate, relax, and re reflect. Okay. Um, um, I'm reading the chart, the chart, I'm sorry, okay. Uh, since I'm going to make you a host. Okay. okay, I think they turned off the waiting room, but just in case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, so I think it's the time we can take a break by doing some um, Qigong here. So there are um, 24 different, 24 um, qigongs for um, each solar term. Um, so everybody can just, you know, sit on the chair or, you know, find a table, which I have in my, in the back. You know, be relaxed. You can do it uh, whenever you want, but, it was suggested to do, you know, between 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. I think that might be the deliver the gallbladder time, but you don't have to wake up uh, in the middle of the night to do it. So first thing, you, you sit flat and uh, stretch your legs forward and separate them from one and the, the other, um, shoulder width apart, uh, make a fist, Make a half fist, it's not, the, this is the fist, and this is a half fist with both hands. Place them on your knees and make the elbows face the left and right obliquely, meaning outward. Turn the eyes of the fist so that the fist has, you know, it's very interesting. So the, the top part is the, the eyes, what we call Chen Yin. The Chen is, the trend of Tai Chi Chen, meaning the fist. So this is the Chen Yin in the bottom of the, the heart, the heart of the fist, what we call it uh, Chen Xing. So the eyes of the fist, uh, turn the eyes of the fists to the ab uh, abdomen, your belly, and the heart um, of the fist outward. Then lean forward, pressing on the, the knees as hard as you can, and shift the center of the gravity backward. Just go back and forth, press and release. And repeat 15 times. OK, 
no need to rush and uh, take your time. And once you finish, you know, click the, the teeth, you keep your mouth uh, closed and click the teeth. There might be some saliva generating in, in the mouth and then you use your tongue to sweep the, the whole um, mouth, including the teeth, any corner of the, the mouth, and then swallow the saliva. So the saliva is the gene of the body. Um, I, I, I've learned from a practitioner who says, the saliva, when people have having uh, a drooling, this is actually a sign of uh, gene leaking. So the saliva is very important to our body. It's the most important, um, uh, the gene, the, the fluid in, in the body. And then breathe in and out. So this Qigong is meant to help with uh, damp coat in the meridians of the hand and feet, uh, the medial arm, the medial femoral, femoral pain, and the foot of flexibility, uh, drowsiness, heat pain in the bottom of the foot, navel pain, um, hypochondriac pain, chest fullness, upper and lower abdominal pain, constipation, neck swelling, cough, cold waste, etc. Okay, let's move on to the acupoints massage. Um, in winter, a lot of people are experiencing deficiency, like fatigue, uh, poor memory, low appetite, a uh, poor appetite, so this is called tonifying deficiency and benefiting loss. Uh, there are five points. So the first point is the, the Guan Yuan, which is uh, CB4, uh, written under the um, belly button. It's to cultivate uh, the Yuan Qi and strengthen the foundation. To so use your son, um, press on CB4, uh, for 50 times. And then you move on to the next point is, which is on the back, the, um, it's called the Gao Huang Shu, uh, bladder 43. Use your index finger and middle finger. You can massage one side and switch the other side. For 15 times, 50 times. It tonifies the spleen um, to generate blood, tonify deficiency and benefit loss, and also boost one's immunity. Remember, we use MOXA on these two points to treat difficulty uh, cases. And, and then press on the Da Jui Xue, uh, the um, the do 14 and do two. The do two is uh, right above the uh, the tailbone uh, in the crease uh, in 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 the in in the in the junction. So use your thumb. Uh, you can press these two points together. Um, the points in the in the the points in the bottom. The G, uh, GB two is called Yao Shu. Uh, literally means the the waist uh, point. So these two points regulate the qi and blood of the whole body, stimulate the yang, yang qi, and enhance the jing essence, qi and shen. Pressing the uh, GB2 will tonify deficiency and benefit loss and also can adjust one's mental state. The last point is the most common point, Zhu uh, San Li, stomach 36, you know, use your thumb or you know, either the middle finger or index finger, uh, whatever works for you, uh, 50, 50 times. Okay. So lastly, you can use your palm, rub your palm 
until your palms are warm, and then place them on either side of the weight. Move up, down, up and down. You can do both hands together until your back feel uh, warm. You can do once in the morning and once in the afternoon. And each uh, 100 times each time, 200 times. I mean, 100 in the morning and another 100 in, in the evening. Okay. So this is for deficiency. Um, so the second massage is to dispel wind and colds. Uh, this is mostly for a uh, common cold or the first stage of cold. When you have some runny nose or headaches or, you know, uh, sore muscles, you think you might have a uh, cold, then you can start doing this. So there are four points, the Tai Yang Xue, the um, extraordinary point. In GB21, use your thumb, one shoulder at a time, 50 times. In the heart three, heart three is here. And ARI five, use your thumb. So the heart three and ARI five unblock the meridians in the collaterals to relieve pain, unblock full organs to expel heat, and dispel wind and cold. And lastly, open your hands, generally tap and uh, massage the scalp. Use your fing fingertips. You can you should go from the GB GB20 to to the to the shoulders. And finally, rub your hands to warm up, and rub your, the side of the nose around the LI and love it. And circle the eyes to warm up the ears and feet and eyes. Okay. So I think a lot of people heard about uh, Sanfu Moxa. That's uh, usually done uh, in the summertime. And the Sanfu are uh, three period of time uh, that you know we do moxa to get, get rid of the cold in the body. And in the winter solstice, we also have a similar practice with moxa. So the three nine having moxa is used on the first uh, three nine period, which is uh, 27 days. Um, starting the winter solstice. I think there are many different ways of doing it. You can either apply just moxa pole over those points, like do, do for uh, run 12, uh, run A6, stomach 36, spring 6, uh, kidney 1, uh, to um, support the, the gene essence, tonify yang, um, or you could use uh, application, you could use the ground um, powder uh, herbs, you can make a paste, you can apply it on, on the skin. You could use white mustard seeds, uh, asaram, kansui, uh, makwar, uh, kori, dallas, yang huso. Yeah, those are the herbs traditionally um, being used. So the mark, the heavenly moxa is help for, for respiratory diseases, uh, digestive issues, muscular skeletal um, problems, and the gynecological uh, diseases. And lastly, we are gonna talk about food. Um, as we mentioned before, uh, it's to 
uh, activate the yang to uh, avoid illness. So we need to apply the same principle uh, in uh, cooking and eating. Uh, here I said, I say uh, repairing and tonifying, warming kidney. I want to talk a little bit more about the two words, um, why I say repair. So this is sometimes very con confused uh, when we uh, speak Chinese, uh, when we speak um, Chinese medicine in Chinese. So we say bu and yi. And bu and yi are very different. Bu is like something is intact. Uh, it's not intact. It, it's something is leaking. So we need to put uh, something over it to cover it to prevent a leaking. However, uh, the yi means um, tonifying or supplementing. That means something is missing or something is not uh, in a normal amount. It's um, de deficient, it's deplete, depleted. So that's, and that's, that's when the time we need to add things to it, not to fix it. So these are different. Uh, I want to just talk about it um, to um, help di differentiate what uh, we are actually seeing in a patient. So if something is leaking, we have to uh, repair first. And then if the body is not able to generate um, the things the body needs, we need to tonify. Then we need to tonify. So we have to prioritize repairing first. And uh, the goal of um, eating properly in the winter solstice is to secure gene for the next year. So that's why it's very important. Um, with the good gene, enough gene uh, stored in, this, uh, in the winter, then you can have a better year or at least a normal year. Um, so if we observe the nature um, in, in the autumn, um, the leaves start falling off and you know, seed starts bare and uh, the root vegetable starts growing. So they put all the energy into the root under the uh, ground so they can um, flourish next year. You know, so it's actually very good to eat uh, root vegetables in the winter time. There are a lot of um, signs and symptoms of kidney deficiency, um, frequent urination at night, weakness of the lower back and uh, knees, uh, impotency, uh, premature ejaculation, shortness of breath, uh, cough, osteoporosis. And also it's important to um, support the kidney to prevent uh, chronic uh, respiratory disease because we all learn from school, the kidney controls the reception of qi. So when you have a strong kidney, the lung problem is uh, mostly uh, easy to deal with. So these are the food to choose uh, to eat in the winter time. There are black sesame, black soybean, sea cucumber, lamb, um, corn, sweet potato, um, sorghum, uh, hair tail, duck egg, rapeseed leaf, sore bean, uh, sword bean, uh, fennel, napa cabbage, kelp, chestnut, jujube, and walnuts. There are some food recommended, uh, which surprised me. Uh, some of them are um, tropical fruits. Um, I don't eat much fruit in, in the winter. Um, I would say better to cook them or make a tea. 
part of it. Uh, for elderly, it's recommended to uh, eat soft shell turtles, jia yu. Uh, it's not a fish, uh, it's a, uh, what is it called? Reptile, maybe? Yeah, and wolf berry is the jujube, uh, no, the goji berry. So those food uh, nourishing for the elderly. Um, these are the food I just listed, but they're not, you know, I, I, I assume people are not very familiar with. Uh, sorghum, worms, the middle jowl, it, it's a type of grain. Um, moves chi, uh, stop diarrhea, uh, expelling wind and bee syndrome. You can make uh, rice uh, with it. You could add it to your congee or make a soup. Uh, hair towel is a... Uh, seafood, uh, it replen replenish chi and blood, tonify liver and kidney, stop bleeding. And soft shell turtle, uh, I, th I think uh, when I was very young, I, I actually had a, a feel, but it's very expensive actually. Um, I believe in, the, in, in New York, we can get from Chinese market, uh, but it's not easy to uh, to 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 the process. So it generate so a a replenish yin fluid treat hot flashes, lower back pain, metroragia, and other disease from liver and kidney insufficiency. It, it can also treat uh, anal prolapse caused by qi deficiency. You can see how strong. Uh, it is, it can treat a prolapse. It's not a simple um, uh, qi uh, tonic. Uh, sore bean is a type of uh, bean, uh, warming in, in nature and sweet in taste. It has the function of warming the middle and descending qi, nourishing the kidney and tonifying the yuan qi. It is good for a deficient cold type hiccups. Um, low back pain due to kidney deficiency and hernia in children. Um, uh, rapeseed leaf, worm in nature and pungent in taste. It has the functions of clearing heat and detoxifying, di dispersing blood and reducing uh, swelling. Uh, it is suitable for uh, vomiting blood due to taxation, uh, low chia. I think that's... Uh, uh, postpartum uh, blood stasis, um, constipation, mastitis, and weakness. I think that this is the last uh, page, uh, but, but later we are gonna talk about uh, the, the program, the specific program, but this is the last page of the presentation of today. So I actually made a, a speaker rice a Suki Bean the suki bean sticky rice yesterday. It's very easy to prepare. You just need two ingredients. You add water to soak them overnight and uh, um, you uh, cook them as you cook rice. Um, as you cook uh, wrong rice, because they probably need longer time to, to, to be fully cooked. Um, so you could be creative, you could use a rice cooker or a steamer, um, and then you can add brown sugar, or you could add salt, or you could add oil to fry it a little bit. Uh, it's all up to you, but uh, the recipe is to tonify chi and blood, uh, fortify the spleen, and warm the stomach. Okay. Um, I think we can have a break. This is a video uh, a in interview. Um, and it's gonna be like a four or five minutes. Introduce Somebody is introducing uh, the solar, uh, the winter solstice. And let's just have a break. And five minutes later, when we finish the video, we're gonna talk about the certificate program. I encourage everybody to stay uh, to know more about um, the whole program. And if you are uh, leaving now, 
our next workshop is going to be on January uh, se uh, 17th at 4.30. We're going to talk about minor code, integrate code. And uh, we have a, a Instagram, uh, the Tao of Life 24 AST, the sort of term. So please follow us for more information. Um, if there's any question, please leave it in the chart. Uh, leave it in the in the chat, and I'll answer after the video.